Mulweni Nonke. Is it closer for greetings, everyone? I'm Dr. Nicola Pallet. This presentation shares some insights into the South African higher education experience, how emergency remote teaching evolved, some of the challenges we became conscious of, as well as opportunities it created for us to share. I work at Rhodes University in the Eastern Cape of South Africa as an Educational Technology Specialist in the Centre for Higher Education Research, Teaching and Learning. For the past six months, my colleagues and I have been supporting lecturers and students at our university with ERT. I am part, also part of a national professional organisation, Health TASA, Africa-based online network, Emerge Africa, and VP of Special Projects for the CLT Division. So I work at various levels, from local to international. South Africa's national lockdown commenced on 26th of March 2020, and students vacated universities the week prior to this. A government statement issued on the 30th of April declared that no student or institution should be left behind. The statement was followed by data deals, zero rating institutional URLs by major mobile network providers, to the delivery of printed learning materials and laptops. These were funded through a variety of sources and distributed at different stages of the lockdown depending on the university. Universal access was understood in relation to material access to devices and mobile data. Because of the unequal infrastructure across the country, connectivity differs geographically with sparse connectivity in the rural areas and better connectivity in urban areas and city centres. This problematizes notions of universal access. The term multimodal approaches was also used in the broader statement to refer to the combination of online and printed materials. Government solutionist perspective was adopted by universities who contextualized it for themselves. Many universities were aware of the challenging lived realities of their students and lecturers who had regular contact with students even more so. We are learning that online learning is far from equal and drawing on Martin Oliver and Leslie Gawley that digital literacies are socio-material assemblages. We need to better understand the socially situatedness to fully grasp how ERT is experienced. It's not just about material access in the form of device ownership and internet connectivity. It's also about other social inequalities. A space and time to study are scarce resources when you are sharing a small, a small home in an informal settlement with many family members. This is the lived reality of some of our students. ERT is also a largely mobile experience for many, either in the form of hotspotting or as their primary device for learning. A few universities have carried out student experience surveys and have been part of national and international surveys. Findings so far are very diverse. But what is emerging is that emotional challenges seem to exceed technology-related ones. Our students had to learn how to learn online overnight and were not prepared. As difficult as this moment has been for lecturers and students, it's been very useful for us to contextualize and rethink educational technologies in our context. The inherent bias of tool terms, tools and thinking we've taken up from the global north. Something we did really well in South Africa was to promote the use of low-tech principles. This resource was created by colleagues in the Centre for Innovation in Learning and Teaching at UCT and shared as an open educational resource. We adapted it at Rhodes University and many other universities in South Africa and across the globe did the same. For example, Zoom with this video on is high-tech and takes a lot of data. So we use high-tech tools in low-tech ways or dispense with these, preferring bandwidth as less low bandwidth asynchronous forms such as narrated presentations, an MP3, or compressed video format, and text via announcements, forums, and so on. Clear, helpful resources that are easy to understand and offer guidance to lecturers new to teaching online were very, very crucial, especially during the emerging stages of ERT. So that there was a shared understanding within and across institutions. Many universities also offered their own online sessions and there were, there were a variety of national conversations online as well, from practical to strategic. At Rhodes, 
we also designed an online course for students on RU Connected, our instance of Moodle. We had made sure the design of the site and resources were mobile friendly and translated key resources. These resources included tips for online learning, how to get started, advice for limiting mobile data costs, fake news, mental health, and where to get various kinds of support, from technology related support to counselling. There's also been collaborative cross institutional and cross country research where through sharing reflections, we have been asking questions about the implications of ERT and what it means for how we think about equity and inequality in our universities. Many of these researchers and contributors are also working to support others with ERT at this time on the virtual front lines. Like myself and others, we recognize the affective and emotional labor for all. We also acknowledge that at some universities it is not yet happening or has been happening very slowly, largely because of differential resourcing and capacity across universities inherit, inherited through legacies of broader inequalities. This is why sharing has been so important. While resourced, research intensive universities were able to share their skills in the form of resources and the hours it took for skilled colleagues to make these. Africa-wide, the push to ERT has shown that online facilitation is a skill that requires attention and worth learning. Online learning is not simply about the delivery of materials online. The Emerge Africa Network is currently facilitating the largest cohort of participants ever on the Facilitating Online course. We have also seen new tools being developed in our context, for our context, such as the Invigilator, Invigilator a mobile proctoring app. This app has been developed in South Africa by lecturers in collaboration with developers and is currently being used by a number of our local universities to ensure the integrity of online assessments. There is also a lot that other countries can learn from us. We have been innovative, collaborative and share well with the spirit of Ubuntu, our common humanity. We are honest about our challenges and recognize complex realities for all that has come about through this moment of rapid change. I hope that we can carry our learnings into our new normal and continue to share.